Hello and welcome back to another episode of Nintendo Nostalgia. My name is Chris and I'll be your host today. Also joining me for this episode, we have my good friend and co-host, Joshua Taylor. Josh, how are you? Great. I heard you had good weather today. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is how I feel winter should be. It was about 60 degrees and sunny. Yeah, same here. I don't think they had that in Indiana where uh, Jacob and Ryan are, but I am not complaining. Today was beautiful. I was able to go outside. It felt like spring, so I, I can't complain. It was a really beautiful day. Did you do anything outside? Uh, just pretty much walked. Didn't have much time. But no, I th- Jacob yeah. likes the snow and stuff, so I don't, I don't think he'd be on board with us. Yeah, he can have it. <laughs> I, it only snowed once, and I'm already sick of the snow. But anyway, um, instead of Radical Rexing today, uh, we'll be talking about the Nintendo Direct, which we all know uh, had a ton of announcements the other day. So instead of Radical Rexing, we're just going to do some voicemails and talk about uh, our Facebook group a real, uh, just a little bit. So our first voicemail comes from our listener, Isaac. So let's hear what he has to say. What's up, NOS crew? This is Isaac. Just wanted to give you guys a shout out, give you a call. I know it's been a while, but I uh, want to say thank you guys for uh, the recent episodes you guys have had. And I know lots been going on with you guys, but that is totally understandable. You know, we all have lives we got to attend to. I think you guys are uh, podcasts I enjoy because you have quality over quantity anyway. So keep up the good work, guys. Uh, really appreciated uh, the last couple episodes, though. They really hit home for me. Um, uh, Metroid Dread, I think you guys did an awesome job going through on that. And, uh, it's a game as recent as it just came out. It's a game that I feel already the nostalgia for. It's a game I know I'll go back to and feel that nostalgia for, for a few reasons, actually. Uh, one being that, like many, 19 years is a long time to wait for a true sequel. And the Prime series for Metroid were awesome. They're still up there for me one of my favorites, but uh, having a true sequel to Fusion, that's something we've been waiting for, and, and it delivered. I think the ending to Dread was just what you would expect, and it really hit, at least for me personally. Uh, the other reason that I have the nostalgia for that game, uh, just looking back, last year was kind of a rough year for me personally. Uh, back in August, um, unfortunately, sadly, my brother passed away unexpectedly and uh, it was definitely a tough time still is for our family but the timing for Metroid Dread coming out it couldn't have come at a better time because uh, the dust had settled by that time in October so it uh, really put me back into a place where I could kind of get lost in that world of Metroid and it really delivered so really appreciate you guys episode going through it I got to experience it again as recent as it was that I got to play it I really enjoyed that um, and I also uh, really thought about with my brother, one thing he would do when we get a game is uh, he would read the instruction manual. That's something that we don't have in games anymore, but he was just that kind of person. He would let me play first as the younger brother. And, uh, you know, getting back into that, you guys are talking about uh, sickness. That's something that uh, I look back on, too. I remember being sick a few times, but playing and enjoying it one time uh i was so sick that i was actually in my parents bed they let me sleep in there they had a king size bed it was really awesome as a kid you feel like this a ginormous bed but they pulled the tv in hooked up our original nintendo i got to play mario brothers 2 so uh, those memories uh, came back as well so again just want to give you guys a shout out it's great when uh, you guys discuss different topics so uh, just, again, wanted to say thank you guys for uh, the episodes. I look forward to what you guys have in the future. Uh, episodes coming up, it looks like it's going to be an exciting year uh, with Nintendo. And uh, Banjo-Kazooie is finally back on Nintendo. That's one uh, game I I'm, have very fond memories of. It's still one of my favorite games as well. So, again, thank you guys so much for all you do. And uh, keep up the good work. You guys take care. All right. Well, thank you, Isaac, very much. You know, we always love hearing from you. Um, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm very sorry for your loss, though. Um, that really kills me inside. Um, but, uh, you know, you sound okay. And um, 
you know, I, you mentioned a lot of things, uh, but, you know, Metroid Dread is a very special game, so I'm glad that you were able to experience that recently. And um, I, I'm glad that, as a longtime fan, that you're satisfied with the ending. I haven't gone there myself, but uh, I am just glad that, A, we got the game, and B, that it is as phenomenal and what we were hoping it would be um, in the end. So that's really special. Um, And in addition, I also am glad that there was a collector's edition, which is exactly what the series deserves. I never really thought that that would happen. So, you know, the art book that it came with and all those special art cards and stuff, it's really special and it makes the experience that much more special and really elevates that game to be on a level that I think it deserves. But, um, yeah, always good to hear from you, Isaac. So, Josh, any thoughts on uh, Isaac's voicemail? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I'm glad you're able to appreciate it sort of on a whole other level, um, you know, considering your past with it and everything. I, I really didn't get to play that series much until, for whatever reason, I didn't play it back on the Super Nintendo until Prime. Um, but, like, with the 2D ones, I didn't really play until, like, the Wii Virtual Console. Um, yeah, I can imagine, especially if you grew up with something like that, you have really specific memories, you know, those sick days and stuff like that, like you mentioned. Um, And then for it to come around like this to sort of a finale, so to speak, um, I can see really making something like that special. And I think they did a pretty well job on like the special edition in particular. Like you said, there's like an art card for like the five main uh, 2D games, so to speak, and things like that. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm I'm glad you were satisfied with how it wrapped up. I won't go into it here. I don't want to spoil it for Chris. (laughs) Yeah, please. (laughs) uh, Um but uh, he also brought up a good point about it being like a good year for Nintendo or like uh, it potentially being a good year for Nintendo. Because sometimes in the past, it seems like uh, we are going to have really stellar years and then it ended up being uh, or we ended up getting things like Animal Crossing for the Wii and uh a Wii Sports Resort and new Super Mario Brothers Wii. So in 2008 and 2009, oh you know, there's a lot that they could have done and that they just did not end up doing. Oh, and Wii Music. Who could forget? Um, but honestly, I think this year is shaping up to be one of their best. I mean, we have all these sequels to these classics and masterpieces that we got in 2017. And who knows oh, yeah. what other surprises we have in store. I mean, just this first half is already amazing um so yeah i i'm very excited for uh 2022 um so yeah uh so let's get into our next voicemail which is jacob and jacob's going to be talking about our topic today which is uh the nintendo direct that premiered just a few days ago yo guys it's me jacob um yeah so we have the nintendo direct I had a really busy day yesterday, so I didn't get to see the direct until about ten, ten thirty ish at night. Um, and then I was trying to avoid everything. And then to my dis- demise, um, I did not like it. <laughs> now I know I'm in the minority. I know that everyone else loved it. A lot of people think it's great, great variety. I just didn't do it for me. When we hit the fire emblems and the xenoblades and the splatoon time, I check out, man, and then it didn't help that Wii Sports. Woohoo! I don't care. Um, Mario Strikers was great. Uh, cool to have a boss mo- rush mode in Metroid Dread. Um, uh, the rookie mode's cool too. I think that's cool uh, for noobs and, and young kids, maybe who really want to get into it, but it's a struggle. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I'm really excited about Mario Strikers. Looks fun. Looks like the old games. Stoked about that one. And then, uh, hard. I mean, I know the Mario Kart stuff. Yes, it's cool. Um, but I'm, I won't lie. I mean, I've been burnt out of Mario Kart for a long time. Since, uh, I got my fill of it really on the Wii U. Um, then I played a little bit when it came to Switch. I just burnt out on it, man. I just, I would like to see something much different, um, and that's just top quality like it, you know. Where's that Diddy Kong Racing, or even if it was a Mario Kart, just different stuff, you know, story mode, things like that, it'd be great. Um, and then, of course, Kirby, everyone's like, oh, Kirby was there, and I knew Kirby was coming, so 
Uh, and I was already sold on it from the first time. I mean, I'm great to see some cool, more cool things, but like, it didn't have to sell me anymore. Um, and then, you know, I just had some, I, I was hearing some buzz. I thought we were going to get some, some different games announced that we ended up not getting. So that was a little disappointing. Um, so yeah, overall, I just did not like it. Give it a 3.2 out of 10. Um, and it was a 3.0 till, till I realized I forgot about that Metroid Dread boss rush there. So, um, and I guess. Everyone's talking about Clono, which is a platformer. Looks cool. Probably get it and check it out. But other than that, those are my thoughts. I know you guys are going to love it, and everyone's going to hate my opinions, but it is what it is. Talk to you guys later. Bye. All right. Uh, thanks for calling in, Jacob. Um, I actually, you know, let's talk about how we view the direct overall. Sure. So, Josh, let me start with you because I think you might be surprised by my reaction. Okay. Well, um, to somewhat bounce off of that, I guess we'll, and I know we haven't talked about all the games yet, so I won't get into specifics. Um, overall, I think it was pretty good. Uh, I guess I'll speak from the direct, the way it was presented first itself. I think actually they've sort of gotten better with how they, they do these over the years and, um, they didn't waste a whole lot of time except for, I will complain, <laughs> complain a little bit about the sports section as soon as they popped up and started like i was like all right i already know what we tennis is it was like pretty much all they were doing <laughs> like i know it was a little more than that but yeah. i was like i don't need to watch i was like here goes 10 minutes down the drain thankfully they did kind of cut the the match short but that felt a little bit like it kind of wasn't needed but other than that i kind of feel like it flowed pretty well um i think they've gotten really good at that um and overall again me and Jacob have some similar favorites, some similar tastes, but I, I did, I did definitely like it better than he did. Um, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't necessarily like a huge wow, like for me, like I think again, kind of bouncing off of Jacob here, if there was like a big new 3D Donkey Kong or something like that, like that would, you know, that, that would tip the scale for sure. Um, but I, I did really like what was there. I know maybe this is a little silly to some, but uh, I know Jacob gave it a number. <laughs> um, if I were to give it a number, I've bounced back and forth. I'm not real great at this. I would say maybe a seven out of ten, um, something like that. Yeah, no yeah, higher. I'll, I'll say no higher. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there, for me, there's different ways of kind of looking at these directs. I think that you have to look at it from like the point of view of did they show good quality games or, you know, potentially good quality games and were there good surprises? And also is that direct for you? Cause we all have our preferences, but sometimes what they show is really good quality, but sometimes it's just not for you. And so that kind of describes where I'm at with it, where I know where I, I know that the direct that they showed was a very good one. Um, it just happened to be that a lot of the games that they showed off were not for me. I noticed that there was a lot of RPGs and a lot of sports games. And so th those are the two genres that I personally don't care for that much. But I can tell you that what they did show of those two genres and, you know, the other ones as well. Uh, those titles look really promising and really excellent, and I think anyone who's interested in those types of games, they have a great year ahead of them. Um, like, uh, I mean, we'll get into this in just a little bit. I'll, I'll, we'll get into more specifics soon, but um, yeah, I think it was a very good direct. I totally agree with you, Josh. Uh, so I would say, for me personally, it was about a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 maybe, um, but if I was someone who had more interest in some of the titles that they showed, I would be a lot more over the moon about it. I would probably say nine, maybe even 10. Um, what they did show is excellent. And I thought the pacing, like you said, was excellent. So they're definitely learning um, from past directs and it's good to see that they kind of have an understanding of like what works and what doesn't. Um, but I did want to talk uh, or at least uh, mention um, that Ryan did leave us, leave us a voicemail. So let's get into that. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ryan. Just calling in. Um, so I can't be on the show tonight. Um, I just wanted to say, like, the direct was awesome. 
um, a lot of highlights. Um, I didn't get there right at start. Um, I came in about in the middle of No Man's Sky. I instantly picked up on what that was, and I was pretty excited seeing that come in, um, coming to the Switch. I was hoping that they would do that. It's one game that I've been kind of curious about. I know it didn't do so well when it launched, but they've made it such a great game since then um, with progressive updates, and, like, it's not as, you know, crazy, um, I guess, standalone and lonely um and there's a lot more like co-op aspects and things like that and it's still like the expansive world and everything um it's a really cool idea um and i'm glad that it's coming portable it's kind of crazy that they're fitting that game on the switch but um definitely looking forward to that um and then like rolling into mario strikers battle league amazing like i wasn't even expecting mario strikers to show up in this direct so i was completely caught by surprise um, then they rolled into the, you know, the Splatoon 3 co-op mode of Salmon Run. Like, I love me some Salmon Run and playing with friends. And so, like, yeah, more of that, yes, I am excited to do that with friends in a new, fresh game. Um, even if it is kind of the same thing that we're used to. I'm kind of curious to see what else the Splatoon 3 has to offer down the road. Uh, I think my next one that I was really excited for um, was just, you know, they, they rolled out Klonoa. Um, I was really excited to see Klonoa make a return on Nintendo, and um, I loved the first one. Um, I owned the one on Wii, and just, like, I'm really excited to get into this Dreamers, uh, or this uh, Fantasy Reverie series um, port. And then they followed up with Portal, and absolutely love Portal. Like, yes, thank you. Um, admittedly, I love it because of all of the memes and the merchandise and my friends talking about it. I've never actually played Portal, so I'm looking forward to playing that for the first time. And then the uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, um, definitely, like, a good win for Nintendo getting Switch's numbers up. It's, like, going to sell really well if they price it well. I think it's, like, 40, so we'll see how that works. I know they're rolling out features and game modes later, so that may, may get some reception that's not great. Um, Metroid Dread didn't really move the needle for me, um, but I saw Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. I'm excited to play those on NSO. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, um, cool. Um, I'll, I'll be excited to play those tracks but I probably won't play it much beyond that. And I'll get it for free because I'm, you know, NSO plus. Uh, so looking forward to that. And then Xenoblade Chronicle 3. It looks amazing, futuristic, awesome evolution of the series in some ways. I just hope that it, it really captures um, the magic of the first one and maybe even some of the magic of X. Um, that would be pretty cool. But where's, where's the Xenoblade Chronicles X? Come on, port it over, please. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Later, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. That was a very thorough voicemail. But uh, I think that we're on pretty similar pages. It just happens to be that he's more into some of the other uh, genres and games that don't interest me that much. But what I will say is that this Direct was very surprising. There were a lot of things announced that I was not expecting and that a lot of people were really hoping for. So there's a lot of fans that are happy right now. Um, Another thing I wanted to mention is I don't understand why Jacob doesn't like Splatoon. It drives me insane. (laughs) Uh, like I don't know if you're with me here, Josh, but I feel like that would be such a Jacob game, and it drives me insane that he doesn't like it. I just don't get it. It's just, it's the ultimate new Nintendo thing that I feel like, it, like what's there not to love? It just, I don't get Dude, it. Dude, I agree with you on that. Maybe we'll bring it up again later. But yeah, that that one's one. I'm not a big online like kind of guy. I just I get online, and I get frustrated because these like super experts get on there and destroy me and everything. Right. Splatoon, however, caught my attention from the beginning, and I've. You know, I've stuck with it. For, I mean, I haven't really played two in a good while, but, you know, between both games, we played like every Splatfest. My wife even got into it. So, yeah, there, there's plenty to like there. Yeah, I don't know. I hope he comes around to three, but I I don't know. It really bothers me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a lot to love about this Direct. And um, another thing I, I'll mention before we get into, like, the nitty-gritty of the Direct is that... Even some of the games that they showed off, like even though they typically aren't for me and don't typically interest me, I still am very curious about them. Like there are some RPGs and some of the <laughs> sports games that normally I don't really care for, but these tiles look really good and I think I might end up trying them. So that's how good of a direct it was and how good these titles seem to be that they you know, it's these are not typical, uh, bland, formulaic uh, games. It seems like they're going above and beyond with a lot of these titles and um, are going to be able to appeal to people who don't normally care for these genres. So we'll see if that works out. 
Um, I wanted just to quickly mention that um, I put a poll on our Facebook group to see how everyone kind of gauged how uh, much they enjoyed the direct. And so most people said good. And the next uh, closest option was amazing. So it seems like people overall have a pretty good reception of this direct. So that's good because we've definitely had some in the past that were kind of crappy. So, yeah, uh, yeah, glad, right. Um, okay, so let's start talking about the games. So the way that I want to do this is I'll mention a uh, kind of like a smaller announcement, and then we'll switch to a bigger game announcement, and we'll kind of go back and forth just in case. Um, so we have a lot of games to talk about, so let's get started. So the first game I wanted to mention was Triangle Strategy, which is Quite a name <laughs> that they ended up sticking with. So, Josh, any thoughts on Triangle Strategy? Not particularly. I tried some of Octopath Traveler, um, the demo, a while back. I remember it was like a weekend. I was, I can't remember exactly why. My wife was, maybe she was sick or something. It was like New Year's. Anyhow, I was at my, my mom's house for some reason and um, was just trying it out on the Switch for like an hour and a half that night. Cause I could, it was New Year's Eve night or something. I wasn't sleeping anyway. And kind of enjoyed it, um, but I never really intended to go back and buy it or anything like that. And this looks to be a very similar sort of game. I don't usually get into a bunch of RPGs. Um, I just, I, I really doubt I'll get into this. It does look pretty good. I can definitely see the appeal for this one. Um, I just don't, I can't really get them all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Because, I mean, w- one RPG takes up a lot of time, and so getting started with another one, it's just like, oh, do I really have the time and it, pen, uh, patience and energy to get into another one? You have to be really selective with the ones yes. that you get into, especially when you're like you and me. Like, I don't know, I, I kind of move on pretty quickly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I feel you there. It, it looks like it's good for people who are interested in it. I'm glad that they are continuing with the HD 2D thing. It is pretty. And, um yeah, using that engine on on that type of genre. So yeah, keep going. Um, but I, it, it just seems a little too technical for me, and that's just not where I'm at right now. But uh, it, it, it's going to be good, I'm sure. So uh, yeah, that was a nice. Well, I don't want to say surprise because we did know about it, but it's nice to be reminded that that type of game is being emphasized. So uh, the next. Uh, game I wanted to mention that's a little bit bigger of an announcement is Fire Emblem Warriors. So what are your thoughts on Fire Emblem Warriors, Josh? Well, I uh, have had a weird <laughs> I don't know if this is the right word relationship with, with Fire Emblem. Um, I won't go into all of that. I kind of got into it in Awakening and Fates. Um, played all versions of that and some of Echoes and all this. I've got the first Fire Emblem Warriors down. Well, it's not really downloaded now. It takes up too much space. I usually have to archive that one. <laughs> but um, right. and, and I enjoyed it. Um, I like the Howard Warriors games. I'm a little more into the Zelda series, of course. But, you know, the, I really did actually like my time with the Fire Emblem, the first Fire Emblem Warriors. Um, this one, I tried Three Houses before, and I didn't could not get into it. Uh, and this is pretty much all this is focused on. And I, so, yeah, I don't see me picking this one up myself. Okay, that's fair. Uh, it was a really surprising announcement. I don't think anyone saw this one coming. But you know what? I'm happy for Koi Tecmo, if that's how you say their name. Uh, they seem to be having a lot of success with this genre. And this, like, relationship with Nintendo seems to be paying off for, like, both parties. So... Um, and I also know that the the first Fire Emblem Warriors, while that was a surprise in and of itself, uh, that one was received really well. And I know a lot of people actually prefer that one over like the Hyrule Warriors games. So, you know what? Why not just keep doing what you can? And if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think it's really interesting that they seem to be focusing on the Three Houses specific game, kind of like how they emphasized, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild for <laughs> Age of Calamity. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting, and um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know it, that genre is not really for me, but um, glad that it exists for people that are into it. So um, yeah, that was a cool announcement. And the next announcement, something small: uh, Metroid Dread is getting an update with Dread Mode and Rookie Mode. Uh, so do either of those interest you, Josh? Well, the day before the direct, I. I'd finally decided to pick Dread back up. I've already beat it on normal. I beat it on normal 
again under four hours. I beat it on hard wow. under eight hours before um, to get all the gallery. I wanted all the gallery unlocked, all the ending screens. Um, and the last one I needed to beat hard mode in under four hours. <laughs> and I tried it once and was like, I'm not going to make it. So I just quit. And I finally sat back down and did it. And it was like three wow. hours and 24 minutes. And I was really proud of myself. I did it. And then the next day they say there's a new dread mode. <laughs> but uh, first off, there is no way in heck. <laughs> Second yeah, off, no. thankfully, they didn't. They don't seem to be adding. Well, I know they didn't because I checked. They didn't add anything like in the gallery. So there's nothing really to get from it. So I'm fine with realizing that I'm not that good. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, I, did, right. I did pretty good at hard mode. I, you know, I did all right. Uh, I'm not ready for this. This is ridiculous. I, I am glad yeah. there is the. Um, I forget what they called it. The rookie mode. Um, it's it's not something I need, but I I do know there is people that have struggled with. Especially some of the bosses are pretty hard in this. Um, and another thing, like I know, <laughs> I know my daughter is kind of half interested in poking around with it. Um, she thinks Samus is cool and everything, and I'm like, yeah, this is going to be pretty hard. So maybe when she gets to where she wants to poke with, play around with that game some, that would be a safer way to at least give it a try. That's true. Yeah, I never really thought of. I'm glad it's there. Um, Yeah, it's it's those are nice options that they included. I really never thought we would get any type of update to Dread, so it's nice that they're Mm -hmm. still considering different ways of making it appeal to people who haven't really tried it yet. And uh, you know, and they mentioned, or what am I saying? They also dropped the demo not too long ago too. So um, I'm glad that they are investing in Metroid. I am really happy, especially for the rookie mode, because the I, I love Dread. I love it so much. But as you know, Josh, I'm stuck on a boss, mm-hmm. and it's driving me insane. And I just don't have that much time. I don't want to spend that much time in between like studying sessions being frustrated by a boss fight. So... Um, well, I think the game itself, like outside of the boss fights, is totally fine difficulty wise. The boss fights just are really challenging, and I have no patience and time anymore. So for me, that'll be really good. I have to uh, unfortunately restart a new game in order to get that mode because you can't, can't switch, it. but that's fine. I'm just glad that that option exists because I was really starting to give up. So that's what appeals to me. Um, I feel like Dread Mode is like impossible for most people they'll, like why bother there'll be but, like you know, two or like, three twitch streamers that do it at some point <laughs> that's about all that's yeah. for yeah that, right seriously that just seems yeah. a little too frustrating that's a lot of loading screen. Well, it doesn't have a bad loading screen problem <laughs> but that's a lot of death animations to set through yeah <laughs> yeah i mean who knows maybe i'll be super bored and good one day eh, that's not gonna happen never mind but yeah glad that they're just giving us options you know so cool uh, next announcement, Klonoa. Um, I I have a good amount to say about Klonoa, but what do you think, Josh? Yeah, I'm really I'm really happy for this one. Um, the only time I've actually played it was in, I would say in the last year or so. Um, I, I may or may not have access to a hacked PS1 Mini, and uh, I got to try it on <laughs> there. And I I didn't beat it. I didn't get to play it for very long um, when I had the chance, so to speak. Um, but I'm definitely willing to go back to it with this newer upgraded sort of version. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I'm glad the second game is in there, too, because I don't believe it's supposed to be a super long game. So I'm all for that, you know, being somewhat of a little collection to sort of get caught up on that series. I like the character. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's very quirky, cute. And I just like any type of colorful, fun platformer that's not overly stressful. Um, Yeah, I I mean, that's my favorite genre, so more of that is always a good thing. Um, I did play the Wii version, and I was really upset because they never ported the second one over. It it was like, I thought that was going to be the next obvious step, but I guess it didn't sell too well for various reasons. But I really enjoyed the Wii one, so um, I'm definitely getting Klonoa 1 and 2, for sure. Like, I'm really happy that that exists. And more importantly, I hope that Klonoa does well. Um, We see on Switch that a lot of franchises that didn't really get a good shot 
uh, have a second chance and a second life and can sometimes be elevated to like a whole new level. And I think Klonoa games really deserve it. I hope it. they uh, um, market it well this time. I feel like, it, like you know, I was big into games sure. during the Wii era too. And I don't feel like I really remember seeing it much, um, but I'd really like to see it do well. This is this is one of those announcements that uh, this is one of my favorite announcements really during this. It was just a nice little surprise, and I know it it, it has its fans, yeah. so I was sort of happy for that that whole group. Right. And yeah, and like it, it's not really a game that we hear too much about. It has its fans, but. They're not too vocal, yeah. Uh, I guess because there's just so many other types of games that people can be a little bit more passionate about. But I love every Klonoa game I've played. I actually just finished playing um, the Game Boy Advance one, the first one, and I plan to play the second one soon. So they're great <laughs> games. So if you haven't heard of the series or haven't played a Klonoa game, I highly recommend at least looking into it. They're, they're really fun. Uh, I don't want to say simple platformers because there's some good puzzle solving involved, but they're just great games. They're really fun, um, very colorful and imaginative. So, yeah, give it a try. Um, next game is uh, Splatoon 3. Uh, they went into a little bit of specifics uh, involving uh, Salmon Run. Um, so s- I'll just mention my quick thoughts on this. Um, I love Salmon Run. That's one of my favorite newest features in Splatoon 2. Um, I'm kind of shocked that the game looks exactly the same as Splatoon 2. Uh, it's like the same looking level and it's like everything just looks exactly the same. Just looks like you know, Salmon Run 1.5 which honestly is fine because Salmon Run is like almost perfect but I don't know, give it a new environment or something like that. Um, at the same time they did show off new enemies and they look really interesting um, as far as like the the way that you would have to defeat them, you have to like, you know, shoot your ink up the pole and then climb to the top and then shoot all around you in a ring. So I just think it's a really interesting thing um, for you to play with other people online and uh, just a really cool collection of like character designs. Um, but yeah, just I don't know, change the look a little bit. That's the only thing I have an issue with. And also like. That's all they showed. It was just uh, Salmon Run. So I don't know. It's just odd because Splatoon looks like, Splatoon 3 looks exactly the same as Splatoon 2, which looked exactly the same as Splatoon 1. So it's kind of like, is Splatoon 3 going to be Splatoon 1.5.5? I don't know. Um, just something in the back of my mind. But I will always love Splatoon until the end of time. So I, I feel like... What do you think about that? I feel like I'm going to say a lot of the same thing is... Especially with Splatoon 2, well, especially with Splatoon 2. Salmon Run was not in the first one, but in Splatoon 2, um, my wife and I spent a lot of time in Salmon Run. That was probably my favorite mode, really, and I just really enjoyed the co-op side of it. Um, it was usually best with people right. you know versus, like, random people online. I learned that pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> but I, I really love that mode. I even I have, the, like, the reversible cover on the uh, the box for it, and I flipped it around to the Salmon Run yes. side. Um, but... Oh, and my old phone cover. I don't have it now. Now it's a little behind. But uh, it was a Salmon Run cover my wife had got me there for a good while. But, but like you said, it it didn't really catch my attention because it just looked like Splatoon 2. And I was like, well, this kind of looks exactly the same. There was like, I, I think the HUD, something was different. And I was like, well, that looks different. <laughs> and like I noticed they threw an egg. So that's cool. But I was like, I kind of want more. And I do feel like there is more because when they showed, what was that, like last year when they announced the game? Um, oh, yeah. It, it looked like it had a different look and feel to it, sort of. Like at least, I don't know if they were kind of hinting at the campaign or what it would be. So it does seem like there's some new stuff there. This just kind of seemed like, okay, here's another boss and stuff. Like I didn't really need to see that presented over a few minutes. I'd, I'd rather just play the game to see that sort of detail. But yeah whatever it was a good reminder that the game is you know still being developed and it is coming out and stuff but i don't know i think they could have done a better job in presenting yeah. that or just the game in general in some way it just wasn't overly interesting to me it just looked like yeah this is a lot like splatoon 2 if you like splatoon 2 you'll like this but like i don't know mix it up a little bit yeah but you're right. It is true that they showed off a lot of interesting new things uh, during the last showing. So we'll see. I'm sure it's going to be totally fine in a great game. Sh- yeah, it's it just an odd thing to notice. Yeah. 
so the next announcement was Portal 1 and 2. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? I've never played them before. Um, I Excuse me, I was actually pretty interested in them a while back. I remember some co-workers I used to have that seem to be really into them, and they, they sound pretty interesting, something a little different. Um, they're not, like, too expensive. I might I might give that a shot once they come out. Um, yeah. I don't know a whole lot about them, but I'm pretty interested in at least giving them a shot. Yep, I'm on the same exact page. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, it seems like a good value if they're going to put those two games together. I know Portal 2 was like game of the year for a lot of people, and uh, the first Portal was just like a really delightful short little campaign. So uh, I'm really excited. I mean, it looked phenomenal, and um, it's just very cool to see that we can play a game like that on the go anywhere. But yeah, um, I'm kind of on the same page as you. I haven't played it yet, but it looks great, and it was a very uh, surprising and awesome announcement. So uh, I think I will definitely pick that up. So, yeah, hopefully the price is good. We'll see. Uh, Next announcement was Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Not so much an announcement, but kind of just reminding us that, hey, this is coming out and pretty soon. Um, My quick thoughts is that... I mean, those are two phenomenal games, two of the best games on the Game Boy Advance in general. I have very little interest in strategy games, but I love Advance Wars. That is just the most Nintendo-fied strategy game ever, and they are just masterpieces. So anyone who hasn't considered it, I highly recommend looking into uh, this collection of both games. It's really cool that they have both of them. Um, yeah, that's about it. What about you, Josh? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I didn't play them back in the Game Boy Advance days. I really really wasn't into that sort of game back then. Um, now I feel like I could really enjoy it. Um, I, I think in my mind I've tried to almost forget it <laughs> just to, I guess from a financial perspective, just to kind of not buy everything. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know with this one for sure how I feel just yet um, it's not like my top genre but I could definitely see me I can see me enjoying this one um, so we'll we'll see as it gets closer <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that's fair uh, I you know I really like the, the thing I like about the originals is the charm and kind of the aesthetic that they went for um, there's just something about the pixels and just that art style that just makes those games so timeless so I don't know. I'm kind of torn because there's something, like I said, timeless about the originals, but they're doing such a great job with these, uh, with this new one. Um, I really like the art style. It kind of has like a toy aesthetic. And even though the characters are very cartoony, they're just so fluidly yeah. animated. So uh, I think I might have to pick it up just because it seems to be its own unique experience, even though it's like the same game. But uh, yeah, they're doing a great job with it. So I hope it does well. That's really all that matters to me. I would love to see more Advanced Wars. Um, cool. Uh, next announcement is, I oh boy, let's see if I say this correctly. Live Alive or Live Alive? I don't know. But <laughs> I really hate that title so much. Um, my quick thoughts is that it looks beautiful. Uh, I've never heard of it. Um, I think like maybe in the background. Um, but I know that a lot of people are really happy about it, and I do love when like Japanese exclusive games make their way west. And um, this one seems to be like a remastered version, and, and it seems like they're putting a lot of effort into it. And uh, I will say, even though I really don't care for RPGs, it looks stunning, and I might have to pick it up just because like the trailer was phenomenal. So um, yeah, live alive or something. Uh, what do you think, Josh? Yeah, it's it's. If I remember correctly, this one looks a bit like that Octopath Traveler, correct? Like this one yeah. was actually, yeah, this one was did look very nice. Um, it's ag- again, I'm not sure if I'll pick it up or not. I don't know if it's it's my kind of style when it comes down to it. But I did really like like there's the different choices, like kind of with Octopath Traveler, from what I understand. Um, it looked like different time periods. And I, I remember as they were showing them in order, um, the caveman looked fun. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they showed like a Western one. I was like, oh, okay, okay. There is some actually pretty cool <laughs> setups here. These are all different and unique. Like, I like these. Then it kind of went in like directions that didn't, didn't interest me as much. Um, I can't remember what some. One of them was like a samurai thing. And that doesn't always, I know everybody thinks ninjas and stuff are cool. It doesn't, doesn't always do much for me. But <laughs> there was that and there was something else that was just like, eh, that seems a little weird. But I, mean, 
<laughs> I think I'd like to try it sometime. Um, I don't see me rushing okay. out to get it, but it, it does look good. Again, I can definitely understand the the appeal or the the want to give this a, a go. Yeah. I mean, for me, honestly, if it's not a 9 or a 10, I'm not touching it. But if it's like a really, really good game for what it is, I'm open to it. Um, I just I, I'm really impressed with what they're able to do with this 2D HD thing. Like it really makes a huge it difference really with those games. Yeah, like very, very cool that they have that and they're really experimenting with it. Like there's one part in the trailer where like I think he's running into the sunset and you just see the the background kind of close in on him and it's just it's stunning. I just I love it so much. It's really like so, uh, inspirational. I'm not going to lie at first with this. I think they showed the caveman first, and I, I swore it was like a Joe and Mac like remake or something. You know what I'm talking about? That, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what I thought of at first. And I think for a split second, I thought it could be bonk. I was hoping it would be bonk. It sadly wasn't. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, I think it's just a matter of time before we get both of those <laughs> in some form. But uh, yeah, uh, Live Alive, that was a very interesting announcement. And I hope that people are thrilled about it coming to Switch. Uh, the next announcement was MLB The Show. Uh, I don't have really anything to say about it, except that there's a really weird, raspy-voiced narrator <laughs> who was like, doing this fake Brooklyn accent and telling us about the game, like... Yeah, so you throw the ball, and I was just like, what is happening right now? This is a Nintendo Direct. Get out of here with that. But, um, yeah, I have absolutely nothing to say, and I will 100% not be getting this game, but I'm sure that a lot of baseball uh, baseball fans will be thrilled about it. Okay, so, you know, I'm a baseball fan. I played for eight years, and I'm a big Cincinnati Reds fan. I don't, like, religiously keep up with all the players and things like that, but I, I do enjoy baseball. Um I'm not always about like the realistic sports titles, so to speak, but I have played some of the show on Xbox Game Pass before, and I've always heard good, good things about it, and it seems pretty good. It does seem like a, a pretty good sports game, I guess. That's kind of a weak way to say that, but um, seeing it on here or in that direct, it looked, it did not look very good graphic wise. Like, it looked like they. Oh. Did not, I looked away, so I didn't even... <laughs> it just looks like they really didn't do much for the Switch version, and it looked like it was stuttering as well, like in the middle of the presentation. Like, I, I think mm. one of the ads in the background looked like a really low-poly JPEG. <laughs> like, it just oh, it didn't look real great. Um, yeah, I hope that maybe well, it turns out better than it looks. Isn't it being, isn't it being like published by Sony? I think so. Is that what makes it like such a weird announcement? So maybe Sony's like, yeah. <laughs> screw Nintendo. <laughs> well, I remember on Game Pass, actually, now that you mentioned that, I think when you would turn it on, like on my Xbox, it says Sony when you first turn it on, which is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> what a world. Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway, yeah. So anyone who might be interested in a game like that, it's coming to Switch. And um, it is very cool that it'll have like, I think, cross saves is the right word so if you played on your playstation 4 or 5 whatever uh your save will be somehow transferred to the switch so i think that's really awesome if you want to go back and forth between the two because i know a lot of people like to alternate between systems so that's a very cool Mm -hmm. feature and i hope we see more of that um next announcement this one was pretty cool uh earthbound and earthbound beginnings um, I think that it's awesome that we finally have them on the Switch. I think they are very charming, delightful games. Uh, but full disclosure, I haven't played them yet. But I just think that the, I don't know, the, the whole concept of Earthbound and the world and the music and all that stuff that I know from, you know, Smash Brothers and other pieces of Nintendo things here and there uh it's just a really beautiful game and there's so much polish and charm in them um i think it's really exciting and great that they are adding them to the switch online but you know we've had it ported like four times already and they kind of acted like it was this big huge deal and i'm kind of over nintendo being like all right this game that you love it's coming to this console that you now have like, this should have happened a long time ago. I, I really don't like this slow trickle of these games, but at the same time, it kind of emphasizes their value and how you should feel like you should be excited for this type of game. So, um, cool. 
but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I am very happy that it's on Switch at, at all, and not just that, but Earthbound Beginnings um, is also there, which that was very surprising for me. So if people play it and it does well, it could lead to more Earthbound in the future. So what do you think, Josh? Yeah, so I guess to get this somewhat negative out of the way, like you said, the presentation of it, I almost feel like is a little cheesy at this point where it's like they kind of led up to it and they showed the logo. It was like everybody kind of knew what was coming anyway. And yeah, we, I felt like we just did this a few years back on the Wii U. Like it, it, it was a little strange how they did that. And I personally was hoping for a little bit more when this would show back up, maybe like a Link's Awakening remake style, like claymation kind of version. Oh. It's hoping for something a little more. I don't see that happening now, but whatever. Um, right. But I, d- I do really like these games, um, especially Earthbound. Um, I didn't play it until the Wii U, honestly. Um, but I, d- I went all the way through it. And it's not again, it's not like me to do that with many RPGs. Um and honestly, I'm playing it again now on Switch on when I get the chance. It's a really easy one to sit down and almost be doing or listening to something else and sort of just mess around if you if you somewhat know your way around at least. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I really like it. Um, it's definitely got its own sort of like quirks and style to it that I really appreciate. Um, I will say with Beginnings, I, kind of both games, but especially Beginnings, um, when they came out on Wii U, I was doing a lot of work trips um, and I was in very rural, I cannot say that word very well. Maybe you know what I'm trying to say. Rural areas yeah. in, it is hard in to West say. Virginia. And like there's some places in this state that there's just nothing. And I do like to get out and adventure and go, you know, I'll hike, I'll go to these small towns, and I really enjoyed it. But there were some evenings I'd be gone for like two weeks at a time. And it was just like me at the hotel. I wasn't really co workers my age. And I would, I seriously remember sitting down for hours. And just playing Earthbound Beginnings. It was a good one to grind. There was a little too much grinding. I don't know if I'll ever go through that one completely again. But if you really just have the time to chill, and something like that is, is pretty perfect. Um, granted, yeah. again, with Earthbound Beginnings, start Earthbound. Earthbound sort of like a better version of it. So I, I'm really torn on how how I feel about Beginnings now. <laughs> um, but if... if if you're a fan of that series, I, I would recommend at least at least checking it out. Um, I, I am very glad they're here, and, and I, again, I'm glad they brought Beginnings too because I wasn't sure. I kind of expected Earthbound, but I wasn't really sure if we would see that version of Mother One again. So, I'm, I'm glad they they carried that over. Yeah, and I will say, like, I have it on Wii and Wii U. I never really got around to them um, because I kind of realized that for that type of a game, I'd prefer it portably. So for it to be on Switch and, you know, having the ability to play however I want, like, I would want to play it on the TV sometimes. But uh, being able to play it on, like, my OLED Switch, uh, that would be a huge motivator for me to want to play this game and and see it through. So um, it is nice to have these types of games that should be played on a device that allows you to play however you want. So I'm, I am excited to eventually get into that one. So that was a nice, pleasant little surprise. Uh, the next announcement was uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Um, I don't have too much to say about it, but uh, I am kind of disturbed that they decided to port the Wii version and not the clearly superior uh, PlayStation or Xbox versions. I'm not sure if there was an Xbox version, but uh, it does not look great. At the same time, though, I really like the concept. I don't know too much about the game, but you know, taking the role of a Jedi and ha- being able to have all these abilities and powers and have like lightsaber duels, very cool. I'm all about that. So I hope that they can you know, port it in an admirable way that makes that type of experience as rewarding as I want it to be. But um, I don't know. It, it, we'll see how it goes because I, I didn't hear too many stellar things about the Wii version. So I don't know. But I'm hoping for the best. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, one? and I'll try not to stick on here too long. Um, <laughs> I, I really remember enjoying the, the Wii version of this. I didn't have an Xbox or a PlayStation at the time. Um, and I don't remember like specific Wii issues with it. Honestly, it's been so long. I'm trying to remember what the control scheme was of it. Um, but I do remember like you could pick different force powers and things like that. And I, I've got my, um, I remember getting lightning up like stupidly strong 
and just running through and just zapping all kinds of people. And it was it was just good fun. <laughs> like it was really fun. Yeah. And there was a couple different endings and things like that. I really got into it. Like I'd, I'm not kidding. Like I was in college at the time, which and maybe that was part of the reason I didn't finish. But we'll see. Anyway. Um, I, I even got the novel for it to see like if there was differences with that and I was reading through it and some other books and things and, and really had a good time with just the whole experience. Um, one thing that the Wii version um, did have, and it looks like this one has, that the others did not, is a multiplayer mode um, where you can sort of just like duel. Um, if I could be way off on this, but I almost feel like it was almost like a, felt almost like a Smash Brothers-y kind of like platform way to fight. I I might be a little off on that. It might just be more of like a one-on-one duel. Um, but there was some really weird characters in there at the time, so I hope they bring them back. Like, uh, I don't know if you know this or not. So this, By the way, this story is not even canon anymore in the Star Wars lore, but like Mara Jade was in there. Um, but then you'd have like Qui-Gon Jinn and stuff like that. So I, I really like that That's side cool. of it. You could pick some really weird characters um, and, you know, really well-known ones and just have some fun with that. So, yeah, cool. if... If it turns out well, I think this could be a good time. Um, yeah. 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 I, I mean, the the way that they showed the game, it looked very impressive and, like, satisfying with, like, you know, you waving your hand and moving some large piece of junk somewhere else or something like that and, like, lightsaber duels. So it does look to fulfill that, like, Jedi dream that we all have. So um, we'll see. But um, I don't know they they have a lot of uh, potential with that title, even though it's you know already made. But uh, if they port it correctly, like I mentioned before, it, it could be a pretty big hit. I think uh, even for someone like me. So we'll see. Um, next announcement. Uh, this is kind of a big one. Uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. So this is a game that we already knew about, but I was surprised because they showed off a lot of things that we never saw before. And I'll have to be honest that. Before this Direct, I had almost no interest in this game. I thought it looked good, but it looked like it was for kids and not that interesting. But the mechanics that they showed with something called Mouthful Mode, (laughs) in addition to the copy abilities that he's had in other games, uh, it's really interesting. I I think it's just such a weird, um, but I don't know, uh, quirky design that... um, that makes the, game, the the Kirby game so special. I love when they get weird with him and kind of make him do things that we've never seen before. So, uh, yeah, but I will say seeing him like stretch his mouth over a car and all these other things just makes me uncomfortable. But there's just something about it. Like there, it's already been memed all over the place. But uh, I will say the game looks beautiful. It looks insanely stunning, and I'm really looking forward to playing around with the types of puzzles and other things that they might have. Um, I just am really looking for some type of solid adventure at the moment, and I think this game could scratch that itch. And, you know, I mentioned this before. I had no interest before this Direct. Now I think I might have to get this game. So, uh, yeah, I hope it reviews really well. What do you think, Josh? Oh, yeah, for sure. Outside of maybe the sequel to Mario and Rabbids, which this is not what this is about. It was not brought up here. Um, well, and Zelda. <laughs> and this is probably one of the games True, I'm looking that. forward to the most right now. It, it looks pretty much right at my alley. I like I love 3D platformers. Um, I'm really itching for a new one. And I've always I've liked Kirby for a good little while now. Um, again, I think it's like a lot of people. It's never like the biggest series to like wow you in every way. But I, I think this one looks like it's going to be doing a lot of new things and uh, really bringing the series to 3D. For the first time, like, truly, I feel like. Um, and right. when they, in, in the direct, they showed off, like you said, it feels weird to say, and maybe I'm just being, it, it feels like <laughs> an old school rare joke, like where it's an innuendo to something. Anyway, they showed the mouth full mode, and that looked, it, it, it just looks ridiculous, but like fun all at the same time. Like yeah. the, the little car you could drive around, you could become a vending machine, because. I mean, you know, why not? And I'm trying to remember what else there was. There's just a lot of just off the wall. Like a cone? <laughs> yeah, the traffic cone for some reason. Like, I don't need an explanation. A light bulb. <laughs> right. Oh, but it's cool because, like, he's interacting with all these objects that you wouldn't think would be that interesting to implement into a game. But somehow they just make a light bulb and a, a traffic cone and, like, a I don't know what the word is, like, forklift or whatever that is. Um, 
uh, incorporated those items into Kirby, and like that kind of opens up a lot of silly possibilities. So um, it made me think of Odyssey a little team. bit, honestly. Yeah. Oh, that's a great point. Yep. Absolutely. So um, yeah, I, I I like that they're getting weird with it and thinking outside the box. I uh, didn't think they would go in this direction, but you know what? Why not? <laughs> We've seen Kirby do everything else, so let's get weird. Why not? Um, so yeah, cool. Um, next announcement, uh, Disney Speedstorm Racing. Mm -hmm. Um, when they first showed this off in the trailer, I was really excited because I'm like, hey, Kart Racer, Disney characters, Pixar characters, sure, why not? And then I saw Game Loft. I was like, oh no. And then they said, free to play. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I'm out. (laughs) I have absolutely zero interest in this game. I know why it exists. It's to make the money and for them to profit off of kids being like, oh, I want this character, this skin or whatever. So it's not for me. I will say it looked beautiful and uh, they might do a great job with it. So I, I, you know, maybe it'll be a great game for everyone, but um, not for me. I don't do free to play. I don't do yeah. I don't do that. So that's just me. What do you think? I, I felt the same. I remember sitting there watching it. And, you know, I'm a pretty big Disney fan. And I was like, oh, man, this this could be good. And, you know, I have my my daughter and everything. I was like, this could be a good family game. I, you know, it looks like they're bringing in a lot of good characters. And then, like, partway through it, like, my smile kind of went away because they were like, it's a free-to-play <laughs> game. I didn't see the game all thing yet. And I was like, oh, that sucks. Like, then it just kind of lost yeah. me. But it, it would take a good bit for a free-to-play game like that to, to maybe get me. We'll see. I just, I like having the game to keep and then 10 years later, you know, we can look back and we can still hook it up and we can unlock things at our own rate. And we don't have to spend $12 to get 1600 Mickey bucks to buy Donald. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, I know, just if they made it into a complete package, like a $60 package, and it was like a pretty solid game, sure. But this is not some. I, I, it really grosses me out when companies do this. Yeah, but that's just me. We'll see. So, yeah, we'll see. If it does well and, like, it's a good game... I'll be open to it, although I seriously doubt I'll look into it, but I, I don't know. I don't know. That was an interesting announcement, and uh, I will process that at a later date. <laughs> right. Uh, the next announcement, which was uh, quite a bit bigger, uh, was Nintendo Switch Sports, which I don't think anyone saw coming. Um, so, Josh, what are your thoughts? Well, um, Hmm. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a whole. I'm not sure what to say on that one. Just yet, to be honest. I, I mean, I, I like Wii Sports as much as pretty much anyone else. Um, you know, that looks like they're bringing back some good ones. I miss baseball and and boxing. Was oddly kind of missing. Um, yeah. But it it looks pretty fun. Um, I kind of just want to see if they have a little more to show. Um, or like they brought back the Wii. I think they called it Wii. Sp- Sports club maybe on the Wii U and yes. it's like they kind of improved it but they didn't really do a whole lot with it or it just didn't really move the needle very much so I'm not really sure what my thoughts on are on this one just yet they played it for a little bit and it looks fun I I don't know I I, I, I guess I'll see I guess I'll see what happens when it gets a little closer I, it kind of feels like one of those things that should have been here maybe a little earlier in the Switch's lifespan mm-hmm. But That's fair. Yeah. We'll, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, I, I'm with you there. Like, there's two sides of me that are like, hey, this should have been there a long time ago. But at the same time, it's kind of great that it's launching at this time because a lot of people have the Switch. Uh, and they clearly want to extend the lifetime of the Switch. So what better way than this type of casual title that is a proven ability to get lots of people on board and sell lots of copies? So I can't blame them for making it. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm kind of on the same page as you where, like, you know, it's there's not too much to go off of. It's uh, sports games done with Nintendo. Um, They're fun. I mean, Wii Sports was obviously, like, a huge hit, and it was fun. I honestly barely played Wii Sports. I'm, like, one of the few people that just did not really care for that. But, like I mentioned before, I'm just not a big sports person. But um, something that really caught me off guard was, like, Ring Fit Adventure. Uh, They 
the way that they incorporated the Switch technology into that type of genre was extremely impressive. So I'm curious to see how that might translate over uh, into this type of title. So um, I'm open to it. Um, it seems like they're doing a pretty good job. I will say it looked a lot more beautiful than I was expecting. Uh, when I went back to watch the direct again, I was really impressed by some of like the background areas. Like uh, when you're like playing volleyball, you're like inside this like beautiful club with like windows around you and like greenery. It's kind of like this downtown club or something. It's, it's it, gorgeous. It looks good, except it didn't look like Woohoo Island, so it was a little bit disappointing to me. <laughs> yeah, um, it, in fact, it's there's like a new island. They kind of like are putting Woohoo Island to the side for this other island, so that's interesting. And the characters, um, I, I wasn't quite sure how I felt yet either. Um, they did have the Mies in there. They looked a little weird because they gave them like full bodies. Um, yeah, they're a little bit more detailed, but like a different style too. And I don't know how I feel about it, but at the same time, I'm kind of sick of how Mies look. Yeah. So it's kind of refreshing. Hmm. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I've said this a lot during this, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe it'll grow so on me. I, right. I, I am curious to see how big of a hit it's going to be. I know it's going to sell well, but I wonder if they're going to like market the crap out of it and it's just going to be like the biggest seller of the year or something. But um, I think it's going to be selling for like a discounted price. So that'll be interesting. I hope but so. I will say, yeah, I, I, I think that this is going to be a huge, huge moment for the Switch in keeping the Switch's lifetime um as long as they're trying to make it be. I don't think there's any other title besides perhaps uh, Mario Kart 9, which is not going to be happening, and we'll get to that. Um, I don't think any other title besides this will be able to do that. I think it's going to be an evergreen title that's going to be selling like crazy for multiple years, even when like the Switch 2 comes out. So um, very interesting surprise, and uh, I am happy to see it. Um, next uh, announcement was No Man's Sky. Um, I've heard very good things about the original, besides the fact that it launched kind of with uh, mixed reception. But uh, the only thing that I really want to say about it is that, I mean, besides it being a huge surprise, it looks stunning. I cannot believe that it's playing natively on the Switch and it's not a cloud game. Uh, when I went back to look at the trailer, I was just amazed at all the detail that they showed. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting this game, but it it looks great. Um, what do you think, Josh? Yeah, it's, it's one of those that has kind of been in the back of my mind for a while. I know it had a rough launch from what I remember, um, and then I kind of forgot about it. It is on Game Pass right now, so to, <laughs> to be honest, it did kind of make me want to go download it on Game Pass um, <laughs> and, and give it a shot on there. Um, I know that sounds terrible. Maybe it takes away some of the value of some of these games for me. but <laughs> um, That's fair. But if it's free, why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it does look interesting. I, I hope it does well. I mean, it seems like they have a pretty interesting premise there. Yeah, it's kind of like with Portal and uh, some of these other games where we're getting all these games that we kind of missed out on for a long time, and we're getting these really awesome ports of them on the Switch. And with that comes the ability to play these amazing titles anywhere. So um, I'm all for it. I, you know, I. I I have no problem with getting more ports as long as there's some new stuff too that we get along the way. But um, it is pretty cool to see like third party support like this. So, yeah. Um, all right. The next announcement was uh, Chrono Cross Remastered. Any thoughts on that, Josh? Yeah, I uh, tried Chrono Trigger before um, on a. Uh a Super Nintendo classic. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. And uh, <laughs> right. I've spent a good, decent amount of time with it because I heard a bunch of good things. Again, RPGs are kind of hit and miss with me, of how much I stick with them. And I think I got a pretty good ways into it, and I can see the appeal again, but I just sort of dropped off. Um, I, I kind of wish I would have maybe played it a little earlier in my life than I would have now. Um, if that makes sense, it just sort of yeah. It got to a point where I I just felt like I was sort of grinding a lot and kind of getting lost, and it was hard for me to focus. Again, that's probably more my fault than the games. Um, and I don't know how much it matters to have played that before this one. To be honest, I don't think they tie together super strong. Um, and 
to kind of bring it back to this game, though, however, Chrono Cross, um, I've, I've heard it definitely has its own fans. I don't think it's as popular as Chrono Trigger, but um, I, I don't know if I'll play it or not. We'll just see, like, if games like that land at the right time in my life, again, like when I was going on all these work trips and stuff, that's kind of the thing I'd actually probably look for. I played through Final Fantasy VII, which I never thought I'd play through one of those games on one of those work trips. So if I end up in a situation similar to that, that's kind of the perfect thing to sort of jump into. Yeah. You know, that was a huge uh, surprise announcement for me, at least. Uh, I don't think anyone saw that coming, especially for it to be announced on a Nintendo console. I thought that would be like a Sony announcement or something like that. But um, it, I was surprised because when I was watching the footage, I was like, this looks a lot like Bait and Kaitos. And those games I loved on the GameCube, they look so much like that. It's so strange. And I actually looked at the developer because I was like, I wonder if, you know, Monolith Soft worked for, you know, Square Enix or something else beforehand. And I don't think so. I could be wrong about that. But, man, it looks a lot like Bait and Kaitos. And I love those games. So, honestly, just because of that, I might have to play it. Um, even if they have like no relationship at all. But um, yeah, like I mentioned before, a lot of the games that they announced in this direct weren't really for me and in, were and are in genres that don't interest me. But this is one of those games where even though I don't really care for RPGs, I might have to give it a right. shot. It just looks so weird and interesting and beautiful and might be a good way for me to really jump into you know, trying RPGs more. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. It was a, a very nice announcement, and um, I hope that it does There's well. something a little so, charming about that style of it, even even though it sort of looks aged. <laughs> I, I, sort of, yeah. I sort of like it. Um, going back to, like, Final Fantasy VII, for example, the pre-rendered background kind of thing, all that. For some reason, I, I kind of yep. like that. I didn't grow up with that. I didn't grow up with the PlayStation, even. But uh, it's kind of got its own weird charm to it. Sort of a simplicity, yeah, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's there is something about that, like there, that. I don't know. There's something charming about it. You're right. There's something about it. So yeah, we'll see how that does. But uh, a very, uh, very exciting announcement for a lot of people for sure. Uh, the other announcement is uh, Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival, <laughs> which is. I mean, yet another sequel in a franchise that's been around for a while. We haven't gotten too much of them in the West, but I do have the other one that's on Switch, and I have, like, the actual drums or whatever you call it for it. And it's pretty cool. It's kind of like Donkey Konga, but with, you know, that specific type of instrument. Um, I don't play it that much, but... Um, I don't know. I just really like the style of those games. They're very cute. They're colorful and funny and stupid. So um, I'll get it if it reviews well, but it's not at the top of my must-get list. What about you, Josh? Yeah, it, lit, it looked like Donkey Kong to me, um, but without Donkey yep. Kong. So, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, those are those are pretty fun, granted. And um, it's really weird to see. Uh, is it? I'm going to say it wrong. Megalovania or whatever it is from Undertale in there. It felt like a meme. Um, oh, that's what that song is. Yeah. I thought it was like from a band that I just no, never heard of. No, it's oh, from Undertale. Okay. Gotcha. It's like that's kind of funny. And and they had the Legend of Zelda <laughs> theme in there, um, which I think that yeah. was in one of the Donkey Kongas. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, oh, I, true. I can see this being fun. Um, I don't know how I feel about the yeah. style, but as far as I'm aware, like with these characters and stuff, I think the only time I've really seen much of them was in, uh, I think I played the Mario Kart like arcade game or something. <laughs> And that's kind of what yeah. I know them from. So I'm like, hey, it's that drum <laughs> thing from the Mario Kart arcade I played at Dave and Buster's. Yep. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I, I just really like that super happy kawaii style. It just always makes me smile. Um, it is very strange that someone requested that the Legend of Zelda song be in there for you to drum away at. I have zero desire to do that. I've done it before. And it's kind of like some of the, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of like the awkward songs that they make you tap along to in Donkey Konga and all the other versions, but um, hey, whatever. Probably right back at you as in Donkey Konga. That was, that was a strange... Ugh. That was torturous, yeah. <laughs> and like the happy birthday oh, yeah. song. Like, why am I drumming? I'm to not this? trying to get off on a on a tangent, but yeah, the um the covers right. for those Donkey Konga games. I hope this yeah. I hope this game doesn't experience that sort of thing because the covers are real bad. 
Right. You mean you don't want to drum along to Mary J. Blige? This is not even about like the original art. Like Headstrong was in one of them, for right. example, and it was like whoever oh, whoever covered that bad. did not do a very good job. It was bad. Oh my yeah. god! They must have been paid like seven dollars at most <laughs> to make that song. It was so bad. It was painful. Anyway, <laughs> before this turns into a Donkey Kong <laughs> podcast, um, the next announcement is oh, this is a big one. Mario Strikers Battle League. Uh, I will let you start with this one. Okay, sorry, I have to get back on track here. Um, yeah, with, with Strikers, um, I don't even remember if I have the GameCube one now or not, to be honest. Um, I do have the Wii one, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I enjoyed it. It's uh, I, I, I haven't played it in a good little while. It's one of those I haven't really gone back to. I kind of want to now. Um, soccer's not, again, it's not like one of those sports that's grabbed my attention, but I understand... But it does fit like a gaming space quite well. Uh, I do remember playing that Wii one and going through like the career mode. And I think I got like 20 games in and uh, got to the playoffs and lost. And I was like, oh, well, crud. I'll just replay that match. You know, I'm close. Almost got it done. I can unlock the last character. No problem. And I go back in and it makes you start all the way over. And I remember that was one of the first times I started having trouble with my language. <laughs> no, I remember turning it off and I don't know if I ever went back. Like I, I got legitimately angry at that game. <laughs> yeah. So, But I'm sure you had a lot of fun along the way, right? I, I did. I guess it was all about the friends okay. I made along the way because the ending sucked. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but I, I know this has a lot of fans. So I was like, Oh, cool. I know a lot of people that'll be happy about this. And, Honestly, with this one, I, I I think I'll enjoy this series more now this time than I did in the past. It's just sort of a better setup. But and the online thing sounded yeah. cool. I'm not a huge online guy, but if we can like being able to make like a club or like a team, um, just sounds like a really cool sort of thing. From what from what I remember, you could sort of like have like your own little clubs, so to speak. Like you know, you could right. have a few people from the show is one of the first things I saw it. I thought of and just make a little group out of that and go online and play together and stuff. So, um, and you can play with up to eight people on the same console. So it, it looked like it was, um, looked like it was a decent improvement off the, the past games. And I know they didn't show a whole lot of it, but they, they showed it enough to really catch my interest in the different gear and things like that. Um, right. Yep. Yeah. I, it, it definitely caught my attention. It was a nice, it was one of these things that I hear asked for all the time, and then it was just a nice little surprise. It was like, oh, suddenly there it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's th- that's something that really caught me off guard. I know a lot of people that love the Mario Strikers games, and they're always begging for a new one. So I'm really happy that they have what they want. And it seems to be like it's going to be a great, great follow-up to the other ones. Um I really, I mean, you know, I've mentioned this a million times. I'm not a big sports person, but this is definitely one of those games where I'm just going to put that to the side because it just looks really fun. It's leaning more into the arcadey mm-hmm. uh, element of those games and not so much the actual sports uh, elements, right. obviously. So um, I am really happy that they're keeping that really cool, like, cell shaded yeah. but, uh, like, aggressive art style. I just think that's so cool. That was one of my favorite things about those other games. Like, just that, that cover is it so is. striking, the box art, you know? Um, so I'm glad that they're keeping up with that. And, uh, I mean, Next Level Games, I imagine, is making that game, which right. is – a very proven studio. So I'm not really worried about its quality because, Mm -hmm. you know, Mario tennis aces for, um, for switch was, eh, but that's Camelot Mario golf. It's okay. Whatever. Also Camelot, but this is next level games and they have been on such a streak. lately. Uh, so it's going to be a huge hit, I think, especially if they market it properly. But like you said, they, they're adding like gear. So it's cool to like customize your character and that affects your stats and stuff. So that's really cool. A nice, like subtle improvement to the previous games and something called the hyper strike, which is, I guess, like a final smash in, in smash brothers. So, um, some really like small additions, but I think they're going to be really important to making the game as fun as it possibly can be so i think it's gonna be a huge hit and um i think i'm gonna get it it looks really awesome uh they just made it look like it was a lot of fun so cool nice nice fun little announcement uh so i think we just have four more games left so uh cuphead dlc Mm -hmm. any quick thoughts on cuphead 
Cuphead DLC. Oh yeah, and I know we've been here a long time, so I won't stay on it too long. Um, I I really enjoy Cuphead. I love the artwork in it. That's that's really up my alley. There's not enough of that sort of thing. I love that old yeah uh, sort of old Mickey Mouse, old Looney Tunes sort of you know that style of of animation. Um, and just that, that rubber hose like nonsense uh, the game itself is like stupidly hard sometimes but I did manage to beat it I remember I played it on Xbox first couldn't do it put it on the Switch and the D-pad is so much better on the Switch than that terrible Xbox one <laughs> so it made it a lot yeah, more doable seriously um, it, it was still very challenging but I did get through it um, and I've been looking forward to this DLC for a while I know it's coming um, and I think that before I think they announced it was coming in June um but yeah, thankfully, I think the chalice is even going to make things a little bit easier with like the double jump and the roll and all that they showed. Really, I really like some of the new boss designs. There was like a cow in there. I don't know if you noticed that was like my favorite one. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'll definitely grab this. Is so is Cuphead mostly like a boss rush mode, basically, it, it, with like some level. It mostly is. Okay. It's it's kind of like you you really got to learn the patterns and things like that. Like you're going to die a few times before you end up killing yeah. something. Um, there is a few cool. levels, like more side scrolling sort of traditional things mixed in there. There's not a whole lot, but there's a few in there to grab a couple collectibles and things like that. Um, different. Yeah, you can. I, w- I will say guns. It's kind of their fingers. I, mean, I was going to say almost like you can buy different guns and things like that. And, um, right. But it's it's really okay. it's really really rewarding when you get through one of those bosses in that game. Um, so yeah, it looks. I like imagine it. it'll pick up pretty much where that one left off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I'm well. I mean, the thing that popped into my mind at first is. Are we going to get a physical copy of this game yeah. now that we'll have the DLC out? Because I think they promised to have a physical release of Cuphead once the DLC comes out. So I hope that they are true to their word. We'll see. Um, but, you know, like you said, the graphics are just incredible. And unlike anything anyone's ever seen before, they really go all in with that aesthetic. And they master it even better than, like, the originals that inspired this game. So it's just mm-hmm. Incredibly impressive, and nothing else even comes remotely close to it. So, uh, super impressive, and honestly, it was really smart of Microsoft to buy them. And I'm glad that they are sharing that uh, awesome title with us Nintendo fans. Um, kind of like with the Metroid Dread up- update, I hope that they kind of have some type of uh, mode or something, I guess maybe it might come in the form of a character, but something for us novice <laughs> players. Yeah. Not really novice. I, that's not how I should describe myself, but someone who is not very... Don't always have the time to, uh, to get the crud beat out yeah. of you over and over again to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like bosses, and I have a good amount of patience, but not I get the it. amount Sometimes, that this game probably reports. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm happy that uh, they have put as much uh, effort into this DLC that this game deserves. So I think that'll be a great treat for everyone who's interested. Um, the next announcement, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, kind of a big announcement. It was the one that they ended with, but um, not something I'm overly thrilled with personally. Um, I think you might feel the same way, Josh. Is that true? Yep. <laughs> so funny okay. enough, I, again, I've, I've said this before, I'm not a big JRPG guy, but every once in a while, like one of these things sort of gets me. And I did play the first one after um, it was about the time they announced Shulk and Smash and Wii U, and I have this weird thing where, like, if somebody's in Smash, I, I want to play their game. I, I, it's just, if right. I haven't played it yet. There's something about it. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't always get to it, but I want to at least give it a shot. And I, I somehow did. I, I feel like I traded something in, which I almost never do. And I got the Wii version of Xenoblade. Like, I think I'd, I'd heard in a rumor or a leak that he was coming. So I managed to get it before, like, it sold out when he was officially announced. Um, so that sort of made it a little more special that I was actually playing the game at the time. And I went all the way through it. Um, it was good. There was a lot of, like, really good parts to it. Um, it got a little weirder as time went on with the story. And I was like, yeah, this... I, I knew this wasn't my style necessarily, but there's still a lot of, to like about this. Uh, X I tried for a little while, didn't really get into that one. And then two just... I don't like the style or the look of it. And I know that sounds very petty, but... I, I just, 
I just kind of lost interest at that point. Didn't really care anymore. Um, and with 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 this, I, it just didn't didn't really grab my attention. Uh, as soon as it popped up, I was like, eh, I'm, I don't really care. Uh, I get if you do, but it's yeah. kind of lost me at least. That's fair. I mean, I'm just happy that as Nintendo fans and as like Switch owners that we have this big JRPG series that is attracting people and has like a huge passionate fan base. So I'm glad that they're getting another iteration of this uh, really awesome series. Like, you know, I'm like I've said a million times already, not the biggest RPG fan, but I know that what is there is phenomenal. I mean, I have the art books for these games for a reason, because the concept art is just outrageously detailed and inspired and gorgeous, and uh, I, I, right. I love what they do with these games. They put so much effort into it. So it is great that we have this massive, colossal oh, yeah. uh, RPG franchise on our console uh, that attracts lots of people. Um, for this particular version, I thought the character designs were really cool. It's clear that they're like influenced by like Eastern culture, and they're kind of giving that giving it that type of twist. So, excuse me. So that'll be interesting. Um, it was just like a really nice surprise. I don't think too many people saw this actually coming. I know a lot of people were hoping that it would be announced, but uh, I I was really surprised and delighted that this type of game's coming out. Um, and it also, now that I think of it, I wonder if this is also going to get like a separate kind of like expansion uh, game because I know with Xenoblade Two, okay. there's like two separate carts, you know, and uh, both of those are a fortune, by the way, mm. uh, like well over three hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, but I mean, what I have played of Xenoblade, the music is insanely good. Uh, the graphics are just. They they push the system to the absolute limit, and I'm so surprised that we can even play these portably at all. Um, but yeah, I just I'm really happy for the fans. I think I'll eventually get it, but um, yeah, it's just a great announcement, and and just happy for for anyone uh, who might be interested. It, it still may even um, grab me at some point, for all I know. I, I haven't didn't watch it super super carefully, uh, but you know I know like I said, the first one somehow managed to pull it off. So, um, I, right. Like you said, the music. I know at least speaking for the first one, there are some really awesome tracks in that. Some of the environments are beautiful, especially on the Wii. Yeah. Like I, I played it on the original Wii and it, it looked really, really good. Um, and it seems like yeah. I feel like this three from what I can see, at least from some of the backgrounds and stuff looked more. It put me more in mind of one than it did two, which is yeah. a good thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I had a very good feeling looking at the backgrounds. They were very inspired and and kind of like whimsical and magical looking and stuff. Um, I uh, when it comes to the first one, I played a, an okay amount of it, but I fell off because I don't like playing an RPG with a Wii remote. Yeah. So um, I am glad that they remastered the original. I do have that on Switch. Haven't gotten into it. Gotten. Ugh gotten to it yet um i have two in the expansion thing but i obviously haven't gotten to that either but my biggest gripe is that with x on the wii u you had to download all these like downloadable updates and stuff to make the game be slightly faster than it was and it barely even helped that much um beautiful game but i don't know that thing had so many issues being on a wii u um, so I hope that eventually gets ported as well. But um, it's Xenoblade 3, I think like a brand new game from the ground up for the Switch. Um, after learning from the previous titles, I think that's a good thing and what most fans would probably prefer at this point. So, um, And also it'll get a huge boost considering that some of the characters were in Smash Brothers recently as DLC characters. So um, yeah, I think it'll do just fine. Um, any other thoughts on that, or should we move I on? I don't believe so on that one. Okay. Uh, so second to last game, Assassin's Creed Ezio Collection. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Assassin's Creed. It's personally just not for me. Um, 
open world games are just not a thing for me. Um, I mean, some of these uh, titles are classics and considered like game of the year material, but um, yeah, I don't think I'll be picking this up, but it seems like it's going to be a great value uh, considering that there's like three games in one collection. So I think that's awesome. Anything that puts <laughs> several titles together for, you know, a fair price, 50, 60 bucks or so. That's great. Um, what do you think, Josh? Yeah, this this one fairly interests me. I um, I played through the first one years back. Um, I've played through four actually on the Switch, uh, Black Flag, which I think is I think that one actually is really good. Um, and I played through yeah. Rogue, which is part of that collection. It was pretty good. Um, I played some of the newer ones as well. The three newer ones. I didn't beat any of the three newer ones, but I, I did play some of them. Um, it seems like with the older ones, they're not as like super super open. Like if you if you were worried about that, there's a little more. Uh, they're oh, a little more linear. Like they're more contained. I haven't played much of two in the past, but from what I understand, that whole sort of collection or whole Ezio, you know, set of stories or trilogy or whatever is especially good. So I am pretty interested in giving that one a shot. I don't know if I'll do it here or I feel like I've seen that whole collection up on like the Xbox for really cheap. <laughs> So I, I can't remember if they showed a price or what this was, but I imagine it's probably not going to be too much. But I, I'm fairly interested in this. Yeah. One concern that I have is that it looked a little stuttery in the footage that they showed. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that Switch can handle these games just fine. It's just getting them optimized. But, yeah. you know, fitting all these games on one cartridge, unless it's like one of those things where you get the first game on the cart and then you have yeah, to like, like- download the other two, you know. Um, can't blame them, I guess. But, um, yeah, it just looked a little jittery in the footage that they showed. But they have some time to fix that up. So, uh, yeah, that was a, also a, a very surprising announcement that I just never saw coming. But it's very cool that it's there. I'm sure it's going to sell quite well. Um, and the last announcement is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting 48 new tracks in the form of, I think it's called like a booster pack or something. And we're going to get all those tracks spread out over like six waves or so. And I believe it's like 25 bucks. So, no, we are not getting Mario Kart 9. But we are getting DLC for a Mario Kart game that came out in 2014 in the year 2022 and beyond. Um, So, Josh, why don't you start us off with your thoughts on Mario Kart 8 deluxe dlc yeah i wasn't real sure how to feel about it um i will say 48 tracks sounds sounds really really good um that's that's a good number it seems like they're all just sort of remakes it's just fine still um i was particularly happy to see the tour a bunch of tour tracks show up because i'm not real big on the phone game i love i've always loved mario kart like there's not a game in that series i don't like the phone game kind of it falls into a lot of those free-to-play pitfalls um, and the controls aren't great, but it, it's okay. It's it's Mario Kart to me. The biggest part is sitting down, being able to grab a controller with other people. Where it's just like this is just a phone game I'm playing against like AI that was other people I don't know or something. It doesn't do a whole lot for me. I wish they would bring more characters though along with this. Like 48 tracks is great, and it sounds like I'm being greedy, but just to have tracks felt a little strange when like they're clearly sort of missing. They could have just just give us like a character for each pack or whatever, right. like give us Diddy and a car, another car, you know, a little bit more customization, something like that. Yeah. Um, and they did do that with the original DLC. Now that I think of it, you know, with uh, the the Wii U version, each DLC pack, I think, came with like one or two yeah. extra characters and cards. So, so, yeah, that's a good point. I wish they would add a little bit more there. Um, they don't, not even, I'm not expecting too much. Like I said, maybe like a character here or there. Um, I would just something a little more to play with in that front. But I, I feel a little weird complaining about, cause there really is 48 tracks again. I, <laughs> this many years later, I wish they would have came out with a new Mario Kart by now. Um, also sort of understand, I feel like they almost perfected that feeling of Mario Kart or that formula and it, honestly, the game still looks really good for being as old as it is. And do you do like another double dash or something at this point where it's just completely different? Or, or right. what do you really do? Like um, Jacob did mention something and, you know, I'm a big Diddy Kong Racing fan, too. It would be cool if they would do something like an adventure mode or story mode, bring back missions in a new way or something like that. 
but I don't know if they see the profit in making like a full new game out of that. Maybe that's that's what it is. I don't know how they would change the the feel of it enough to justify a new game at this point. Um, so I, I sort of understand, um, and I'm cool with it. It's only twenty five bucks. I'll get it with the expansion pass anyway. I don't know how that works when eventually all that stuff goes away. So I'll probably pay twenty five dollars for it one day, but. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely play it. I mean, I, I'll definitely jump into it, and I'm excited to give them a shot. It's just uh, there's a lot of, like, weirdness around that, you know, with it being as late as it is. Yeah. And just yeah. tracks. Just, you know, a lot of little oddities about it. Kind of a Nintendo thing to do, I guess. <laughs> right, yeah, seriously. That was one of the most bizarre announcements they've ever <laughs> had on, on these directs or just ever. But, um, I mean, overall, I think it's a good thing. Like you said, lots of tracks, 48 tracks and for 25 bucks to get 48 tracks. That's a very good value. Yeah. It's not bad at, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's just, and honestly, it makes sense because at this point you have to do something related to Mario Kart at this stage of the Switch. Do you release a brand new game or do you do something like this or some other third weird option? I think this is a very fair thing to do considering how many people obviously have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I feel like some people even have multiple copies at this point. So might as well capitalize on that because clearly Mario Kart 9 is not coming to the Switch. It's coming to the Switch 2. So they're just biting over time to uh, wait for the next successor to come out, and I think that's okay. The only issue is that I'm kind of bored of Mario Kart 8 as much as I love it. I think it's, like you said, kind of like perfect uh, for what Mario Kart is, but um, yeah, it would just be nice if they added a little bit more just to make it feel a little bit more refreshed. Some characters, I would even argue some new items, like maybe one or two new items just to mix it up a little yeah. bit and make the gameplay a little bit more interesting. It's just going to be more of the same, but somewhere else. And that's okay, because I love Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to pieces, but I'm kind of bored. <laughs> it, it's it's a strange um, it's, feeling. It is. But the, yeah. Like like you were saying, there's about, I just looked it up, there's roughly, I, I would say, about 48 or 40 million copies out there at this point. So, Crazy. again, it's like, do we sell another one and just change things up enough and see what it does? Yeah. I mean, their logic is there should probably just be one Mario Kart per console and ha- them having Mario Kart 8 at the, right at the forefront of when the Switch launched, I think was one of the biggest factors in the Switch's success. They really made that game and tailored that game to really take advantage of the Switch's um capabilities. So, um I think that they're going to do something similar when the the successor comes out. Uh, so that'll be especially interesting. But you know what? I will take this. Uh, I will take this right. because it is. It could have been that we got absolutely nothing right. related to Mario Kart until the next version. So I'll take it. Very good value. Um, and it is very interesting getting tour tracks. But that's cool because I have zero interest in playing the phone game because, uh, you know, like you said, it's just filled with like menus and D, uh, not DLC, in-app purchases and all that stuff, and that just grosses me out. Just just give me tracks. <laughs> I'll pay for tracks, give me tracks. And uh, the last thing I'll mention is that it's very cool that it's being pushed out in waves, so it'll be nice to get like a little surprise on my Switch menu that's like, hey, you got four new tracks, give them a try. And uh, it could be a nice way of having the online feel a little bit more fresh because that's definitely what the Wii U version had going for it when those tracks came out for it. So I'm not going to complain. I think it's great. I'm definitely going to get it. Um, I hope the tracks are interesting and modernized enough. I didn't see them look too amazing in the footage that they showed, but um, who knows? So, but um, yeah, that was a very, very interesting <laughs> announcement that I think everyone's going to be processing for uh, a few weeks until it comes out and even after that. So, um, cool. So, those are our thoughts on the Nintendo Direct, on the game specifically. Uh, so, Josh, any final thoughts on this Direct before we head out? No, that's about it. I'm, I'm kind of glad we sat down and did this, especially during the Direct. Like, it, it came out... <laughs> kind of funny it came out the day like the finale of uh the book of boba fett was out so my mind was on that i wasn't really thinking a whole lot about the right direct 
you know, it, it, it's just kind of, it hit me at a weird time, I guess, like as when I watched it and it just sort of came and went and I was like, okay, that was fine. Um, but looking back at it, there, there's a, there is a decent amount that I am interested in personally. And like I said, they kept the flow going pretty well. So again, I just, yeah. we'll say overall, I think it was pretty well. And we have some pretty fun things to, to look forward to in the future. Yeah. And you know what? Like, as we all know, we've experienced Nintendo Direct droughts like crazy. Yeah. So it's nice that not too much time went by before we got this one. And as far as like a February Direct, this is probably the best one. I don't think it's like the best Direct we've ever had, but what they had there for a February Direct was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. There was something, I don't want to say something for everyone, but there was something for most people. And what they did have for most people was really surprising and delightful stuff so if this is just a first taste of what they have for 2022 i think we're gonna have a great year and a great few years beyond that so it was a very nice surprise and uh, i think they really hit it out of the park with uh with all the announcements that they had so i hope that everyone who's listening got at least a few games that they're really excited about Uh, for that to write because i don't know about you guys but for me personally like these things give me life (laughs) these things give me something to look forward to and like help me you know do my job or study or something and be like okay this is what i'm working for you know um so anyway i thought it was a great direct i hope you all uh enjoyed it as much as we did or perhaps even more um, not like Jacob, though. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. But um, if you guys wanted to reach out to us, you can uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Josh now has a TikTok for us. <laughs> you can also email us at Nintendo Nostalgia IN at gmail.com. And we also have a phone number if you guys wanted to call us at any point, and our number is 317 969 Five six nine zero. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you all soon. Bye bye. Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>